This is a little bit different of a video than I usually make. So as some viewers may know, one of my main hobbies is rock climbing. And there's something going around on rock climbing YouTube right now where people do the Magnus Mitbo 9C climbing test. So that, I don't think this was developed by him, but it was maybe popularized by him. So I thought I'd make a video where I did the Magnus Mitbo 9C test and saw what my results were. It's supposed to be a predictor of your maximum climbing grade. And then since he's from Norway, I thought that maybe I would do a problem from the Norwegian Math Olympiad as well. So we'll do number one from the 2010 exam. And this has two parts, so I only have one part on the board right now. Okay, so maybe we'll start off with a little bit of a warm-up. And so this is the standard warm-up that I do whenever I'm about to do a workout. So I generally start with the air bike. So I've got one of these nice air bikes that I like to use to warm up and do cardio with. And then after the air bike, I'll usually circuit between doing some warm-up hangs on my hangboard doing some finger curls with this tension flashboard that I have, and then also doing some power snatches, and then also some campus boarding. So that sequence will take maybe about 15 minutes and I'll go through maybe three or four rounds, maybe increasing the intensity of the finger curls and the power snatches each time, but then keeping the hangs and the campus boarding about the same. So after the warm up, I got into the climbing test. So the first thing was to test my maximum finger strength. And so for this maximum finger strength, you wanted to do a five second hang on a 20 millimeter edge. So recently the standard for measuring finger strength has been a 20 millimeter edge. I think this this was probably popularized by the guys from Lattice Training. Okay, so let's see the details of this test. So as you see, there are 10 performance levels for this test. So you wanna hang from the edge with a percent of your body weight. So if you hang with 100% of your body weight, you get one point. If you can add an additional 10%, you get two points, and you can see that it increases as we go down. So I started at 160% of my body weight, which is 96 pounds. And I knew that was maybe a really good place to start because I've been doing seven second, three second repeaters for three reps at 100 pounds recently. And so since I could do that at 100 pounds, this would maybe be a good like warm up set for my maximum test. And so I did this one quite easily as you'll see in the video. Then I moved to plus 128 pounds, which is 180% of my body weight. And I thought that this would probably go okay as well. And it did, it was quite easy. Then I moved to plus 160 pounds, which is 200% of my body weight. And I was really surprised that I had any chance of doing this because I thought this would be way above me, but I barely eked it out. I think I went like 5.1 seconds or something. And I knew that I should not try 220% of my body weight. I didn't even check how many pounds that would be um, because I wouldn't be able to do that as I barely made this 200%. So I ended up with nine points for the maximum finger strength test. So now before we talk about the maximum pull-up test, maybe let's do question 1A from this 2010 Norwegian Math Olympiad. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this climbing content. Now we're ready to look at a problem from the Norwegian Math Olympiad. So like I said before, this is from the 2010 edition and it is question 1A. We'll do question 1B later. So this says the point P lies on the edge AB of the quadrilateral ABCD. We're also given some extra data. We know the angle measure of BAD is equal to that measure of angle ABC, which is equal to the measure of angle CPD, which is 90 degrees. So we've got these three right angles. Furthermore, we know that AB, in other words, the length of that line segment, is equal to BC plus AP. And our goal is to show that BC equals BP or AD equals BP. Okay, so let's maybe get a picture of this on the board real quick and then we'll jump into the solution. Okay, so I think this is a pretty good picture that replicates the data that's given to us in the problem. Now I'm gonna start labeling some things. 
I'm gonna say the length of the line segment B, P is little a. And then I'm gonna say that the length of the line segment P, A, or A, P, maybe we'll call that Z. I'll call this line segment A, D, X, and I'll call the length of line segment B, C, Y, like that. Now I wanna use the Pythagorean theorem a couple of times. So first off, I can use the Pythagorean theorem with X and Z to find the length of this edge, and that'll be the square root of X squared plus Z squared, like that. Again, that's just the Pythagorean theorem. Then we can do a similar thing over here for this edge using this triangle PBC, and we'll get the square root of A squared plus Y squared. Next, I'll call this distance right here, maybe I'll call it R, and notice that I can find this distance in terms of these two lengths, again, using the Pythagorean theorem. But this time, I'm just gonna find the square of its distance just so everything looks a little simpler. So we have r squared is going to be equal to this squared plus this squared. So that will just cancel the square roots, giving us x squared plus z squared plus a squared plus y squared. Okay, fantastic. Now next, we will calculate this distance r, or really the square of r in another way. And so that other way will be as follows. I want to put a line from D intersecting BC at a right angle. So that's like creating a bit of a rectangle here, A, B, then whatever we'll call this, but I won't name it D. But then transposing this line segment over here, we see that this has length X meaning that's what, what is left over here has length y minus x. Okay, nice. Then this edge up here from d to this point has length z plus a, but it also has length x plus y from this equation right here. So maybe we'll use length x plus y, you know, just because I think it's a little easier to work with. Now we can calculate r squared using the fact that we've introduced another right triangle into this situation. So we also have r squared equals x plus y quantity squared plus y minus x quantity squared like that. So let's see how that simplifies. So multiplying this out, we'll get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Here we'll get x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So in the end, we'll have 2x squared plus 2y squared. Great. So now we're gonna impose a system of equations built out of setting r squared equal to r squared along with this right here. So let's see, setting r squared equal to r squared, we have 2x squared plus 2y squared equals x squared plus y squared plus a squared plus z squared, like that. Simplifying a little bit, we get x squared plus y squared equals a squared plus z squared. Again, by this rule right here, we know that x plus y is the same thing as a plus z. So that's our other equation. So now we've got this nonlinear system of two equations. So I'm gonna tweak this a little bit to give me an equivalent nonlinear system of two equations. I can square this guy right here to give us x squared plus 2xy plus y squared equals a squared plus 2az plus z squared but then I can cancel out the x squared plus y squared and the a squared plus z squared on both sides, then divide by two, and that gives me xy equals a times z. Next, we can solve this equation for z and then insert that into this equation down here. So let's see, that'll give us z equals x plus y minus a. Then inserted down here, we'll have xy equals a times x plus y minus a. So we wanna rearrange that so maybe we can factor it or simplify it some other way. And the way that I would like to rearrange it is a squared minus ax minus ay plus xy equals zero. 
So what I did is I distributed the A on the right hand side and then I just moved it all over to the left hand side. Okay, but now notice we can do some grouping and factoring. I'll group these first two terms and then I'll group these second two terms. I'll factor an A out of these first two terms, leaving this me with A times A minus X. I'll factor a minus Y out of the second two terms, leaving me with A minus X. And then finally, I'll factor an A minus X out of the whole thing, leaving me with A minus Y times A minus X equals zero. But now notice that that tells us that X equals A or y equals a. But notice by our diagram, that immediately gives us that bc equals bp or ad equals bp. Okay, so now let's go back to the climbing test. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that problem. I think it was pretty nice. So next I moved on to the maximum pull-up test. So this was a weighted pull-up on a bar and the scoring goes the same as the maximum finger strength test. So you get a point for doing a body weight pull-up, you get two points for body weight plus 10%, all the way down to this spot right here where you get 10 points for body weight plus 120% making a total of 220%. So I haven't done super heavy weighted pull-ups in a while, but a couple years ago I was doing them quite often. And after a lot of work, I was able to do a single pull-up with an extra body weight. And so that would be nine points. But I was very, very doubtful that I would be able to do that today. So I first tried plus 96 pounds because I can generally do a plus 100 pound pull-up um, without too much trouble, and that went okay. Then next, I tried the 128 pound pull up and I barely made that as well. So, and that's where I ended. As you can see on the video, I tried a plus 160 pound or 200% pull up, but I couldn't even get close. So here we ended with eight points for the maximum pull up test. Okay, so now let's see how the core strength um, test went. Next, I moved on to the core strength test. The first three stages of that was a tuck hang. The next three stages was an L hang. And then the last four stages was a front lever. So I can do front levers okay, so I just tried front levers. I didn't worry about the other ones. And so I just went for my maximum front lever hang. And with my first attempt, I got about eight seconds. So obviously that puts me here at seven points but it was pretty close to 10 seconds, so I gave it another go. But as you can see, I didn't make it. That time I only made maybe like six or seven seconds, so it looks like a five second front lever is my maximum at the moment. Okay, so now let's maybe do question 1B from the Norwegian Math Olympiad. Okay, now we're back to part B of this problem from the Norwegian Math Olympiad. So we wanna find the shaded area in terms of this number A, which is on the open interval from zero to one. That is, it is strictly larger than zero and strictly less than one. And it has this following setup. We have this unit square, so that's a square with a side length of one. Then on this bottom edge, we've ticked off a little bit of it that has length A, and then over here on this right edge, we've also ticked off a bit of it that has length A. Next, we draw a diagonal from here to here, and then line segments from this vertex to this one that we created with this length A, and then likewise over here kind of symmetrically. And our goal is to find the area of this shaded region. And I'm gonna do this maybe in a not super elegant way, but it's maybe the first way that I saw to do it, and that is to put it all into the coordinate plane and then use calculus. Okay, so let's put this in the coordinate plane. So there, I put it in the coordinate plane and I saved you guys a bunch of the calculational details. They're not too bad. So here I've got a point zero zero here, one zero here, one one here, and zero one here. So let's see, that makes this coordinate right here the coordinate one comma one minus a. So that's pretty easy to see. That makes this coordinate right here a comma zero. Then we can use those 
along with this fact that we have a point up here of zero one to find the equation of this line up here, which is one minus AX or Y equals one minus AX. That's not too hard to do with just the point slope form. And then here we can find the equation of this line is Y equals one minus one over A times X or maybe one minus X over A. Next, since this goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1, we know that's just the line y equals x. Finally, we can find some important intersection points. So y equals x intersects with 1 minus x over a at the point a over a plus 1, comma a over a plus 1. So again, that's pretty easy to check just with elementary algebra. And then furthermore, it intersects with this 1 minus AX line at 1 over A plus 1 comma 1 over A plus 1. Okay, so now we're ready to maybe partition this into a pieces and then set up an integral. And so the way I will do that is extend a vertical line segment from here up to here. And notice we could call this like area 1 and then we could call this area 2 which means our goal area can be written in terms of area one plus area two. But now notice that area one is the area between this top line here, y equals one minus ax, and this bottom line here, y equals one minus x over a, from x equals zero to this point right here. So that means we can write that as the integral from zero to a over a plus one of the top line, which is one minus ax minus the bottom line, which is one minus x over a. So like I said, that's my area one just by calculating it via a definite integral. Now we can do the same thing for area two. So that's going to be the integral from, well, it'll be this x value here to this x value here. So I'll write those down, a over a plus one, and then one over a plus one. And then we've got a different bottom curve, but the same top curve. So we have one minus ax, and then minus x dx. So that's what we're left with. So let's see what kind of simplification we can do. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to a over a plus 1 of, well, what do we have? The 1 is going to cancel with the 1. Well, this is going to cancel this minus sign. And then we can maybe factor an x out, leaving us with something that looks like 1 over a minus a times x dx, like that. Then next we can do something similar over here. This is going to be the integral from a over a plus 1 to 1 over a plus 1 of, maybe we could factor a minus sign out of this whole thing just so the signs look better on the inside. So if we do that, we'll have a plus 1 times x minus 1 like that dx. Now it's just a matter of taking the antiderivative, plugging things in, and then making like a pretty gnarly calculation, but it is an elementary calculation. So let's maybe get to it. So taking the antiderivative here, we'll have one over a minus a times x squared all over two. We need to evaluate that from zero up to a over a plus one. And then we'll subtract from that what we get from evaluating this integral. So that will be a plus one over two times x squared minus x. And then we need to evaluate that from a over a plus one to one over a plus one. And at this point, it's just kind of a messy game of symbolic manipulation. So I'll let you guys work that out because there's nothing fancy going on there. And what you end up getting is one minus a over two a plus two. And so that's the final answer for this. Okay, so I think we've got one more climbing test to do. So I think the second part of that problem was pretty interesting as well. Next, I did the endurance test, and this was the one that I was dreading the most. I put off doing this kind of test for a really long time because the endurance test was just maximum duration of hanging from a bar, and that just sounded super brutal to me. But I thought this would make a good video idea, so I thought, you know, might as well do it. Okay, so here you're scored in time, and it's time in minutes. Starting at half a minute, or 30 seconds, gets you one point. All the way down to six minutes gets you 10 points. 
And this was the one that I had no idea how, I, how well I would do. I probably could have guessed pretty closely these two in the middle. I would have been a little bit off on number one because I did better than I thought I would, but this could have been all over the place. I could have gotten from five points to nine points and that would have seemed about right. But as it went in the end, I made it exactly three and a half minutes. I probably could have gone another five or 10 seconds, but I knew that I couldn't go a full four minutes, so I decided just to call it at three and a half minutes because I was about maxed out at that point. So here I got three and a half minutes, giving me another seven points. Okay, let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at the summary and how I did. Okay, so let's see how I did on this climbing test. So for the maximum of thinker strength, I got nine out of 10 points. For the maximum pull up, I got eight points. For core, I got seven points. And for endurance, I also got seven points. I'm a bit surprised at how strong my maximum finger strength was, although the rest of them don't really surprise me that much. Maybe I'm a little bit surprised that I only got seven points on core because I've always thought that as one of my strengths. So that gives me a total of 31 points which says that my maximum grade should be 8C plus or 14C. And yeah, it is true that I've done one 14C in my life and it took a lot of work. And so how do I think this test did? Well, I'm happy to get such a high score, but I do feel like I'm overscored just a little bit. I feel like scoring something like 31, which puts me at 8C plus, means that I should be able to climb grades that are like 8B plus quite quickly, but I definitely can't. I think that's a real big weakness of me. I can work on something for a long time and finally do it as I did with the 8C+, but it takes me a long time to do things that are even a little bit easier than that. Also, I think maybe my raw strength is stronger than the grade that I actually climb, which is another reason I scored so high on this test. So if any of the like climbing training YouTubers out there want to maybe do a series with me to try to patch that up so that I can maybe send eight B pluses quickly um, while keeping my maximum quite high, I would be really into that. So maybe feel free to get in touch. Also drop a comment about what you think about this new format. I don't plan to do all my videos like this from now on, but maybe once a month I would like to do a math professor tries video like this one. I think it was quite fun. All right, that's a good place to stop.